Fucking Radiohead. Loving the Radiohead. Man found dead after boat mishap. Boating accident? Uh-oh. Could happen. That could happen, too. Summertime, a lot of people are boating. Sure. And you would be found dead after a boating mishap, right? Certainly. What else is going on in the world? I'd hate to be found dead after a mishap. A boat mishap. You don't want a mishap being your demise. It always implies something really avoidable and you're an yeah, asshole. Yeah, you want yeah. it to be more <laughs> impressive than a mishap. Yeah. Mishap. You never want to die because of a mishap. You're Man so dies right. in testicle-smelling mishap. <laughs> <laughs> Steven Slater is a dick. Yeah, he is. Boy, God, I, is I've a... turned on this fucking guy. Everyone's turned on him. All, all he needed was a little time in front of the TV cameras, and you realize, well, this guy's just a jerk. He's the he's jerk off flight jerk. attendant that you hate. Yeah. He's, he's a chode. <laughs> chode. I heard that one in a while. He's a jerk chode. You chode. Oh, but Janine Pirro's going to give her opinion on it. Shut up. <laughs> He's just a jerk. His story's falling apart, too, right? I guess he initially said that that cut on his head was because of the luggage or the right. altercation the gosh, he yeah. got into with the, with the woman before he pulled the chute and <laughs> fucking jumped out. <coughs> uh, and, and now it seems uh, that isn't the case. And he's nope. not saying where he got that wound. Yeah, no one's backing up his uh, claim anymore. Yeah. Uh, eat, pray, love, or eat, love, pray. What do you do first? You eat first, then you do a little praying, and then you do a little fucking... I don't know. Ah. That looks Sorry. horrible. No, it looks good. It's, oh. it's a chick. It's a chick thing. You know, totally we're, not supposed to, we're not supposed to understand that one, I don't think. No. Nah. You're not fine it, Danny? No, I got it now. What happened was I did a goof review on... Uh, Red Eye, last Monday. So can we hear the, the goof review before you do part two of this, Jimmy? Yes. Okay, good. I wouldn't object. By the way, here's the, here's the setup. But you're setting it up by saying you purposely were doing a goof review of Eat, Pray, Love. Greg had said to me, Gutfeld emailed me, he goes, look, I would love you to be my Eat, Pray, Love correspondent. Because <laughs> I'm so wrong for it. And I, it was before the movie had come out. I had obviously not seen the movie. Mm -hmm. So it was a goof segment that I was going to review the film. And that's where the comedy comes in. Well, let's hope, the guys. The comedy. All right, here's Jimmy uh, goof reviewing Eat, Pray, Love. Everyone knew that. On Red Eye last Monday. On, yeah. on Red Eye last Monday. Oh, <laughs> hold on a minute. That was nice, huh? It's sensuous, succulent, and life-affirming. And it opens this Friday. I speak of that movie, Eat, Pray, Love. It's a liberating tale of a woman's year-long trip to three far-flung countries of the world. The character, played by Julia Roberts, finds herself embarking on a search for pleasure, spiritual enlightenment as a way to find balance in her life. It's not just a travelogue, really. It's an empowering story of self-fulfillment. With me now is Jim Norton, our Eat, Pray, Love correspondent. Jim, uh... By the way, thank you for becoming our Eat, Pray, Love correspondent. Thank you for asking me, Greg. <laughs> well, you know what? You were the first person I thought of. because As I, I think, should have been. Yeah, you've been preparing uh, for w weeks for this movie, haven't you? I really have been. I've been uh, meditating on the toilet and <laughs> punching my own testicles. Yeah, really? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Now, then the movie begins. She's a wreck. The Julia Roberts character's a wreck. She's bankrupt. Her wedding's over. And she just says, you know what? I'm going to get up and I'm going to leave. What kind of message does this send to American women? It's important, Greg, because it says that no matter how lousy a wife you are or how bad an employee, how horrible you are with money, there's always time for a vacation. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Just get up, go to Karachi. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, she goes to, she goes to Italy, and you know what she does? She, she enjoys the, she savors the simple Italian foods on her first day. She eats a lot of gelato. She really does. And then there's that wonderful scene at the end where she's vomiting gelato and Jägermeister into a gutter. Yeah, it's interesting, you know. A lot of movies wouldn't show that. No, but they do, and then Eric Roberts comes over and overacts again. It's really a nice moment. It's, it's unusual, because they're related, yet they share a love scene. Yes. Which makes no sense. Yeah, and yet he stayed here, and she went way up there. It's really comforting for both of them. Now, um, she takes a language course. She does. Yes. Through a series of wacky mishaps. Yes. She has to say, it's an emergency. Where's the toilet? 40 different languages. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, that's so beautiful, though. Really she does, does find the toilet. I, I... Oh, thank God. Well, half the time she does, half the time she has to improvise, right? <laughs> Hats, fields, whatever she can. Steins. 
<laughs> oh, that Julia. She's charming no matter what she does. <laughs> a know. hole in the ice in Alaska. <laughs> oh, wow. oh, God now, love her. She, um, she discovers yoga. She goes to meditate. Uh, and she, she approaches spirituality with skepticism. And then she's won over, isn't she? She does. I was the first one to start clapping what she really did. <laughs> because I didn't know if she was going to overcome. Yeah, you had no idea, did you? Oh, it was heartbreaking. These yoga scenes. And I'm sipping my chamomile tea. <laughs> and I'm lactating. And I'm thinking about my vagina and motherhood. Yeah. And uh, then she finally realized what she was supposed to realize. Yeah. I don't want to blow it for everybody, but really, it was well, What happens at the end of the movie? I mean, I don't want to spoil it for everybody, but does she finally find her true love? She really does. She goes to India, and she begins traipsing barefoot through the slums and falls in love with the smell of garbage and a man with one foot. <laughs> oh, wow. See, it doesn't matter. Uh, if you are missing a foot. Is that Absolute, the message? That is the message, because she holds up his good one, and she goes, this is going to go, too. And then she kisses it, and the film ends. She's marvelous. <laughs> Did you smell Oscar? Oh, Greg, this is the finest film I've ever been forced to sit through at gunpoint. Yeah. It really was wonderful. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? We're going to close things out with a post-game rapper from TV's Andy Levy. Yeah. And that was obviously Dude, a, a... fucking hilarious, thank first you. of all. Obviously a ludicrous yeah, review of a film of I had course. not seen. And someone took it seriously? On their blog? Well, before, she's a, just, a, she's How, a Why blogging. would you take that seriously? What happened to feminism? Like, I guess they were always a little take themselves too seriously, but I would love to get her on the phone. Her name is, uh, what's her name, Danny, the one who wrote that? Not even to yell at her, but I really don't want to, uh, Sarah, I can't. Uh, Sarah Arboleda. I would love to just talk to her and go, like, how do you not understand that? The, the the comedy, whether you thought it was funny or not, that's a subjective thing. But it was in the ludicrousness of the review. Yeah, it was obvious uh, a comedy thing. It's like uh, in The Jerk, when he goes, damn these glasses, son. And Steve Martin points at them and goes, okay, I damn thee. Yeah. That's a ludicrous thing to happen. Mm -hmm. It's not ever going to happen. Yes. So she, uh... maybe Steve, if he's listening, can we look for her? Yes. So what did she uh, write there, Jimmy? Uh, I don't have it. I have her on the out. phone from Australia. <laughs> she wrote, uh, oh, it's long. I don't want to read the whole thing. Where's the uh, part? Uh, Can I have it printed out? I I'll say I have no desire to read Eat, Pray, Love when it was a book, and I have even less desire to see it now that it's been made into a film. So she has not read it or seen it. Okay. I was content to argue that my lack of interest was because, for whatever reason, the film just doesn't appeal to me. But after hearing comedian Jim Norton's sexist review of the movie, mm. I'm beginning to worry that it has something to do with the stigma attached to lady films, especially lady films in which the lady in question is trying to find herself, not just get a man. Uh. Uh, and then she goes into her favorite film of all time is Stand By Me. I would really like to edit this. Uh, and then at the bottom, she bashes a... Uh, uh, fuck. I don't want right. to just paraphrase because I don't want to rob what she's... Let me, let me give me... I'll have to read it. I can't... I can't right, so we'll, we'll have to go back to this, yeah. I guess. Uh, my favorite movie of all time is Stand By Me, and while I vehemently argue that it's because the film is so perfectly encapsulates the moment of childhood right before gender really starts to matter, I also admit that I hated explicitly female counterpart now and then with a passion. We already know that female comedians are absent from the big screen, but what about dramatic actresses? Is that female protagonists are less interesting or just less interesting films are typically made about them? I know that this is hardly a groundbreaking argument, but Norton's comments infuriated me. Oh. If for no other reason than because he seems to suggest that a woman's spiritual journey of self-discovery is frivolous, irresponsible, and worst of all, boring. It is boring. It is boring. Shut it. But what annoys Coming me... where we sit. But this is, again, her... I don't have the agenda this, this no, chick no. does. You were fucking around. A movie about self-discovery, regardless of gender, is boring right. to me. And for her to assume that it's because it's a woman, it made her angry as a woman. Well, that's real female empowerment. Have a great sense of humor. Then she goes, first, there's Norton's completely unoriginal misogyny about the unimportance of a woman's self-discovery. And it was like, you dummy. To think that that was about a woman's self-discovery being unimportant when I'm making fun of the film I haven't seen. Yeah. And then she goes into the, uh, the chamomile tea and the lactating line. Yawn, we get it. Women's films are boring. Oops. There's more. I'm sorry. Right okay, yawn, we get it. Women's films are boring and they're all about emotions and junk. Where were the guns? Where were the nameless hot chicks? Oh. And it's like... At if, my house. If, yeah, <laughs> if you only knew the kind of films I... Almost every film I love does not have nudity in it, you dummy. It's like she's... she's 
annoyed about a movie review of a film, a book she has not read, a film she has not seen, about a comedian that she obviously knows very little about. And she's not doing it in humor. She's seriously angry. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah, that's fucked up. That's, and it goes on, and I don't want to paraphrase it. On and on. But it's just like, that's what you deal with. Like, what, what happened to fucking... Feminists just annoy me. There, I've never met a funny feminist. No, but this is what no. they are. It's like this self-righteous, like, I did, it's, uh, hey, Bob, women's self-discovery is not to be ridiculed. I, I'm just getting a kick out of reading your quotes. I just heard it. Like, I just heard it on the clip we played. But to read your quotes and then her reacting to it is simply insanity. And then she, but then she misquoted me. And then there's that wonderful scene where she vomits gelato and Jägermeister into a butter. Why would she vomit into a butter, you dummy? Gutter, stupid. Oh, my God. She said the most appalling of Norton's assertions is that Roberta's character, based on the novel's author, Elizabeth Gilbert, is just a bad, irresponsible person trying to escape from her failure as a woman. And then that was the, it's important, Gray, because no matter how bad of a wife you are, no matter how horrible of an employee, <laughs> first of all, where is the thing about failure as a woman? I say this yeah. because she's divorced and unemployed, so I'm addressing each point, and the fact that she was a wife, well, that's because she's a woman, but I say employee... And how horrible you are with money. Those are not gender specific. I am making fun of the... I'm going... I'm answering the question that Greg mm -hmm. asked me. Right. Uh, I wish she was on the... Can we get her? Have you heard that or no? Are you yes, just hearing yes. this now? No, I'm looking for the name. But I said it 10 minutes ago on the air. I know you said it. I don't know how to spell it. Thank you. Well, how can we just do it? <laughs> you want me to scroll up so you can see? Thank you. I said this 10 minutes ago. No, you didn't say 10 I minutes. did. Yeah, Thank right you. when we... Later. Thank you. Right when we started... The seg the segment. Yes, I've got it now. <laughs> I know, but ten minutes ago we were trying to can we find her. <laughs> well the segment, whatever. Oh god. Mind boggling. Come on, Steve. <laughs> I mean there it was a three and a half minute clip that we played. And he could have been in here while we were playing the clip. Yeah, whatever. Or just Googled the same thing I told Danny to Google. Yes. Did you I do could, that on the air or off the air? But you could really kind of find okay. it. You could, we did say the name. If you're the producer, you can find shit. You have to be able to find shit. So. And that's how you... What's the name? I can find her number. It's just like, you know, it's either what's... I yeah, yeah. Can you find her number? Can yeah, you try I, I appreciate it. I didn't... Oh, my God. Let's go to Jeff in Cleveland. Jeff. Hey, yeah, they only make these kind of films about self-discovery and spirituality about women. Oh, they maybe. Never make them about, they never make them about guys. I couldn't name one that isn't at least a biopic. And the reason why is because they're too boring. Only women would sit through this crap. Yeah. But to, to imply that it was based in misogyny, instead of just this is a boring concept to me yeah, because yeah. it's a boring concept. Her, again, her assuming that she knew where I was coming from well, was being misogynistic is what drives me fucking crazy. So irritated. And what's the movie about? She eats some good things. I don't know. She finds some uh, spirituality. I and, don't know any more few, than she does. Uh, and a few lovers over there. And that makes her a better person when uh, she comes back to America. It's, it's wonderful. Yeah, then it's fantastic. Okay. If you made the movie with Anthony Bourdain or something, then I might watch because it would be cynical and funny. And, you know? and wouldn't the movie uh, do better if it was a, a frump in the lead role instead of uh, Julia well, Roberts? why wouldn't yeah, We're supposed to think a hot piece of ass like Julia Roberts would have all this shit going wrong? She's getting to be frump A little long in the tooth? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah she's, she's definitely in She's still all right, territory. man. She's still all right. Although she has a witch's nose. Dude, I got to admit, that fucking perfume stuff. Killed my throat. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Oh, wow. Why did spray? It's That's a drag. It just like, I really? feel right at the base of my throat where my nose and mm. throat like meet. Oh, man. It's like, um, and then I drank my water and it had some in it. <laughs> I guess it had settled. All right, cool. Maybe Steve will send them out to sell the cologne soon. <laughs> Steve. Are you mad at Steve? Someone said I'm annoyed Steve. because to me that's just like, come on, man. You, we were doing this segment. We should have been on this a, a few minutes ago. And if you yeah. can't get her, I understand that it's last minute. But to only come in at that point and ask does bother me, yeah. Someone said Steve just doesn't know how to call a woman. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and by the way, I do my Boneyard show here on Wednesdays. Uh, it's from 11 to 12, and then it replays. Some of the versions of the songs they've been playing are not the ones I asked for. Ooh, and it's, it's, it's really fucking annoying me. And then I hear D.C. has given Troy Kwan a hard time. So I would like somebody else in D.C. to handle this. If the guy who's doing it is annoyed by doing it, maybe you have a lot of shit you're doing. I get it. I don't get it. 
It's Edit, like I, edited versions or something? No, no, no. A, a little stupid thing. Like, I did a lot. I, my, I do themes. And last week's theme was all live songs. And one of the, the versions I wanted was fucking Ted Nugent doing uh, Wang Dang Sweet Poon Tang. Because I love the version of Full Blunt on Nugent. I'm not a fan of Nugent or that song. But off that album, I like, like it. it. So they play a different version. I'm like, this is shit. Why do they play a different version? I don't know. No, thank you very much. Was, thank you very much. was it another live version? It was, but it wasn't what I asked for. And I put the album name in parentheses. Well, why bother doing the show if they're not playing the songs you dig? This place is very confusing. Very. Extremely confusing. And Troy's giving him the info. I know he is. Troy who? <laughs> oh, hi, Troy.